In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hello and a very warm welcome to St. Stephen Walbrook for our early celebration of Christmas. We don't have a service here on Christmas Day, so we're taking the opportunity of celebrating just a few days early. It's wonderful that you're with us. And uh, we very much look forward to Haydn's uh, scintillating mass, the St. Nicholas Mass. All you need is in the order of service. And we turn to that and pray together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given us thy only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we, being regenerate and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit, through the same our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 7. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, 
Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David. Is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, a young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now I invite Elizabeth to light the remaining candles in the unbent wreath. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, merciful and gentle. To you be praise and glory forever. Your light has shone in our darkened world through the childbearing of blessed Mary. Grant that we who have seen your glory may daily be renewed in your image and prepared like her for the coming of your Son, who is the Lord and Savior of all. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, King of peace. To you be praise and glory forever. The new light of your incarnate word gives gladness in our sorrow and a presence in our isolation. Fill our lives with your light until they overflow with gladness and praise. Blessed be God forever. The Holy Gospel is written in the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, 
and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The real vivid essence of Christmas is captured in those ten simple but glorious words. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Indeed, it is the essence of the whole gospel. Luke and Matthew tell the stories of the human characters involved in the birth of the babe. John gives us the story of God, God's love story for his people and indeed the whole of his creation. With magnificent, timeless poetry, John depicts the launch of God's rescue plan as the word, the creative force of God who shockingly becomes enfleshed, shocking for the philosophers of both Jews and Greeks. In an avalanche of unconditional love from heaven, John tells us that God literally pitches his tent in the middle of us, right in the heart of our chaos and mayhem, to experience in full human joys and pains. God arrives to be with us, Emmanuel, as Isaiah prophesied. Now we'll probably encounter a few love stories uh, over the next few days, perhaps the ultra cheese of love actually, or the holiday, the ever glorious, in my opinion, sound of music, or perhaps for those with more stamina, Dr. Zhivago or you may well have much higher tastes. But we perhaps overlook what pulsates at the heart of Christmas, which is the love story of God. And as God comes to share our life, he makes an offer to absolutely everyone to become part of his life. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Acceptance of this offer brings a true understanding, I believe, of identity, dignity, and community. Identity is, of course, uh, given considerable airtime and is a, a complex subject Identity has many aspects, gender, orientation, our roles within families, where we come from. You'll be used to my banging on about to my Yorkshire background with tiring frequency. 
generally people are too polite to ask the very legitimate question in response, if Yorkshire's so great, why do you live in Essex? It's for another time. And other aspects of identity, our occupations, our interests, preferred type of music, our football allegiance, etc. For those who believe in him, those who receive him, the dominant identity, transcending lesser but still important aspects of identity is that they are beloved sons of God. The overarching identity. And confidence in this identity empowers and liberates and should enable us to be who we were created to be. And in the modified words of St. Catherine of Siena, set the world on fire. God becomes involved with us to create a new community of people who accept his offer, celebrate a common identity, mutually support each other, encourage each other to dance to the rhythms of God, achieve our full potential. And of course, this is uh, where we struggle, particularly as a church. The strength and scope of community have so often been impaired by rejection of the different, a refusal to understand what all means, a refusal to accept equality, a refusal to accept diversity, allowing a primeval phobia of the different to cast dark shadows. Now God's celebration of diversity resonates throughout his creation. Each of us is unique as every individual snowflake is unique. There is quite extraordinary, if alarmingly diminishing, biodiversity. The life and work of Jesus trumpet acceptance of the different and acceptance of equality. He was born to an ordinary northern family. He was honored and understood by outcasts and outsiders. His most consistently faithful followers were women. He welcomed the marginalized, shared tables with tax collectors and prostitutes. Yet we, the church, for most of our history, have seemingly not been convinced by the patterns of God and have been more enthusiastic about excluding rather than including. Obsessed with sex and saying who can and who can't mutually love each other, establishing club rules, oppressing and discriminating. But there is hope. Last Boxing Day, we lost one of the most inspiring and courageous of our leaders, Desmond Tutu, who thankfully was with us for 90 years. Tutu had a strong understanding of the implications of God becoming human and how it is the ultimate celebration of humanity. For him, any form of discrimination against a fellow human is blasphemy. And in addition to his crucial mission against apartheid, he campaigned vociferously for gender equality, for women to be priests and bishops. And he regarded discrimination against members of the LGBTQI community as unjust, as unjust and as unacceptable as apartheid. For Tutu, we need diversity. We are interdependent. We need other humans to be truly human. And we need to belong in order to thrive. Today at St. Stephen Warbrook, we have the very happy privileges of receiving in a few moments uh, Paul into the communion of the Church of England. And later today, we have the baptism of Nadia, who originally connected with us through the London Internet Church while in Dubai. I'm inspired by 
their sense of calling, their keenness to belong and to join a church which is gradually becoming more inclusive. I'm thankful that Bishop Sarah is my intermediate boss and I'm grateful for the Bishop of Oxford's recent bold speaking out for recognition of same-sex marriage. Our pace is bemusingly slow to the rest of society, but we will get there with some turbulence. The best chance for our growth is if we focus on actively celebrating and living this love story of God who delights in diversity and who chooses to be with all and to give real life and freedom to all. May we let the world know that in the words of Tutu, all, all are meant to be held in this incredible embrace that will not let us go. All. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We stand to sing our offertory carol inspired by John's gospel of the Father's heart begotten.
Well, I'm delighted to introduce uh, Paul to everybody. Paul works across the road and lives in Suffolk, Suffolk. and uh, has uh, asked to be officially admitted into the Church of uh, England. He was, uh, he was baptized in the Catholic Church and uh, we're very supportive of our Catholic friends and uh, we're also delighted that uh, Paul is uh, to continue his uh, journey of faith within the Church of England. Paul, you are here to be received into the communion of the Church of England. Do you acknowledge the Church of England as part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church? I do. Do you accept the teaching, discipline and authority of the Church of England? I do. Will you take part with us in worship and mission? I will. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith. With all who have been baptized into your name, keep us faithful to our baptism, and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the communion of the Church of England in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I sent you with a candle lit from... Haskell candle. Christ's light working in your life. We all say together, Defend, O Lord, these your servants with your heavenly grace, that they may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until they come to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction 
for the sins of the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine according to thy son our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. In the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. and When he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father almighty, world without end. Amen. Now, as our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. God, our Father, who has made known to us again the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, confirm our faith and fix our eyes on him until the dawning of the day when Christ, the morning star, shall rise in our hearts, to whom be glory both now and forever. Amen. Well, thanks indeed uh, to all of you for celebrating with us at St. Stephen Walbrook and for all your support uh, throughout the year. Do stay for some refreshments if you're able, and we're going to take uh, the opportunity uh, to, to thank uh, Spencer, who has uh, been one of the most uh, diligent and knowledgeable of the church watchers on a Wednesday for, for many years, and uh, we decided it's time uh, to say thank you properly. So. Do stay if, uh, if you can. And uh, thanks to uh, Elizabeth and uh, Lee for their help uh, throughout the procession of carol services which uh, came to a conclusion yesterday morning with a very lively service uh, for Threadneedle Asset Management with many, many children that involves uh, Lee parading around the altar with some helium balloons in the shape of uh, uh, lions and a flamingo which broke free. So it's our little symbol of uh, creation. <laughs> He's offered to bring his uh, air gun in. Um, if uh, you have any other, any other solutions, on a postcard, please. <laughs> Do have a, a really happy, joyous Christmas uh, and a wonderful new year, and we look forward to seeing you in 2023. Thanks ever so much for the glorious music to the Call Scholars and uh, to, to Phoebe, just sensational, thank you. And uh, do have some wonderful, much deserved time off, um, gargling those uh, vocal cords with something smooth and powerful. I invite you to stand for the blessing. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one all things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love today and always. Amen. Amen.